So my name is Amal Chautani from Institute of Urban Transport. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all to this 14th Urban Mobility India Conference 2021, which is being held online second time in the series. This particular session is on best practices in integrated urban public transport. The session will be chaired as well as moderated by respected Mr. Sudesh Kumarji, who is a team leader in Mort McDonnell. Mr. Sudesh Kumar is an eminent engineer from IIT Kharagpur. He served the Indian Railways in various capacities throughout the countries, including Divisional Railway Manager, General Manager, and he supported at the level of an electrical member railway board, which is equivalent to Secretary to Government of India. Even after retirement, he has continued to contribute from his vast experience and specialization as advisor on several urban transport projects in India, including metros and an extremely externally aided urban transport projects. Presently, he is heading the Mott McDonald team on climate resilient projects in Indian cities. I welcome you, sir. The session, in this session, there will be five panelists and I request all the panelists, the presentation time is 12 to 15 minutes. You can take and leave two, three minutes for question answer, which sir will handle and we have to follow the time schedule because in online, the time is very important. The reporter of the session is Ms. Apurva Chohan. She has also joined and I request her, whatever the, I mean, you note down after the session, you can send us by email. Now I hand over the platform to Chairman Sir for conducting the session. Thank you all, Mr. Chairman, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chodani. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am, at the outset, I am really very, very grateful to the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs to be given this opportunity, more so because uh, from every such uh, UMI and other platforms, I have been the learner, I have been the gainer. I am thankful in particular to Mr. Chodani for giving such a brief and a crisp introduction about myself. And on the particular theme of the multimodal integration, most participants and of course the panelists put together or even individually, they would know much more than what I do. So I don't think it's appropriate for me to dwell as a keynote speaker on this subject. But I would like to put before you a small anecdote and probably that will indicate the user's perspective of the multimodal integration. It was quite some time back, maybe in 1998, when I had a small trip to Switzerland. And I was uh, fortunate to have with me, I was fortunate to have the host, uh, Mr. Jirmula, who was the erstwhile general manager of the SBBB. At that time, I had asked a question that the whole world is going for fast trains like TGV and all those super fast planes. What is the policy which the Swiss railways intend to adopt? And his answer was uh, something which uh, was quite revealing, but it became really an eye opener after I had retired and began to understand the business of transport or urban transport. He said that for us, every customer, the moment the customer enters the portals of the railway station, till the customer is on board a train or he's out of the portals of a station, he's our guest. And it is our responsibility to ensure that the time he spends, he or she spends on the premises is the minimum. And we do not in so much insist on speed. We insist that the time spent to interchange from one train to another or one mode to another, or to enter or exit at each instance is less than three minutes. And that makes up a lot for all the speed. Coming from a Swiss gentleman, 
I understood the meaning of the word time. And their three minutes is three minutes. That is what I understood that I will put here that when we talk of multimodal integration, be it the physical access, the fair, the fair media, the social inclusion, the digital inclusion, or the affordability, the integration should be such that the time and effort spent by the user in the terminal for interchange or exit, all these things should be minimum and a most comfortable experience. Well, with that, I would like to mention that uh, for the today's evening uh, session, uh, I would say that Galaxy has been arranged for this. Uh, the speakers are almost stars in the Galaxy. Each and every one of them is a person of eminence by himself. But yet, allow me to introduce to you, I'll introduce all five together. And then as and when the sessions open up, I'll call them, invite them one by one. We have with us Mr. Kia Jyotilal. He is a principal secretary transport to the government of Kerala. And uh, as, a, as a graduate from IIT Madras and MBA from the Institute of Chartered Financial Accountants, he has earlier been the collector of Trivandrum and Kanur, and he has really acquitted himself in various portfolios in the IT, transport sector, agriculture, food and civil supplies, tourism and parliamentary affairs, ports, aviation. There would not be any other person better than him as having being instrumental in the smart city projects of Kochi and e-mobility in Harjan to lead the discussions here as a first speaker in the MMI. We are also fortunate to have with us on the panel, Dr. Rajesh Pandya. He is the advisor and managing director of the Smart City Limited Surat Municipal Corporation. He has a tremendous experience of aggregating more than 33 years in different capacities, including a very long span of, of almost 15 years as a town planner and a development officer. As the deputy municipal commissioner, he has headed the departments of traffic, BRTS, public parks and gardens of the urban local body. And really, it is in his time that the city has become very dynamic and known for what it is. He has been a part of the team which strategically planned, implemented what is now operating successfully as the longest BRT system in the country. As a professor in practice at the SVNIT, he is actively associated in academics and research in urban planning and urban mass transport areas. He himself having published a number of papers in Indian and international journals. We will be really very fortunate to have with him a presentation on his perceptions of the multimodal integration. I'm almost tempted to mention that out of all the six people here, on the panel, that's myself and five speakers. Uh, we are almost majority of railwaymen, three. I would say that's the majority. So we are uh, happy to have with us Mr. Brajesh Dixit, who's an acclaimed railway administrator and a very, very efficient infrastructure builder. Mr. Brajesh Dixit is presently the managing director of Maharashtra Metro Rail Corporation, what is called as the Maha Metro. And he has been associated with the Indian Railways for over 30 years, including his association with the Mumbai suburban and the urban rail transport systems. He is known to believe in total transformation of the rail infrastructure, and especially in the quality of services, both in the passenger and the freight sectors. He has ensured that a very expeditious start and fast progress of this major project of the Maha Metro, where he was the first person, what is called as employee number one, from there, it began with the scratch till he has built up the organization, including finance from Indian and overseas agencies and what is now a vibrant metro system. We have also with us the well-known and trusted Professor Shivanan Swami, who is the Director Emeritus and the, of the Center of Excellence in Urban Transport, the SEPT University, Ahmedabad. He's an economist, and a known urban and regional planner. He has been an educator, researcher, a policy advisor, and a consultant on urban development planning and management. As a person by his name, he is known as an authority on the subject. Uh, 
all the students in this uh, field have uh, are familiar with him and he is known as a philosopher and guide in fact it was in his uh, guidance that this program of leadership in urban transport was conceived executed and has matured so with that i think uh, we will be really looking forward to his presentation the concluding uh, presentation we will be having with us dr fabrice morino who is the managing director of the sncf hubs paris he is the md of this hubs and connections subsidiary of the sncf group and his expertise is linked to the transport hubs from financing conception exploitation to the optimization of the retail and real estate development revenues he holds a phd in economics a masters degree in business law and his particular expertise and association in designing of railway stations in shanghai seoul paris lyon london st pancras bordeaux st jean and as a managing director of snc of hubs and connections he aims at managing and operating the railway stations internationally he has been knighted by the french national order of merit in 2016 and he is the chairman of the sector of station managers global group with that uh, at the galaxy of presenters i would not like to come in between the audience the participants and including myself and i will once again welcome you all and hand over the mic and the presentation to the first speaker that is dr kr jyotilal mr jyotilal please uh Thank you, sir. I am I'm audible. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, respected uh, Chaudhani, Sri Sudesh Kumar, sir, and our uh, most respected uh, Union uh, Secretary, who has been kind enough to what is a uh, have it even at least online. Uh, the Durga Shankar Mishra, sir. Uh, I got a small presentation, so I'll just upload it in uh, just one minute. Uh, see when you talk about integration uh, actually it's a both a physical as well as digital integration in the physical integration uh, maybe you need to bring in all the uh, phys- i i hope my presentation is visible now yes sir okay okay yeah so the physical infrastructure how do we integrate all the modes of transport whether it is metro rail road uh, water transport all should come at one place we started first with uh, Uh, in Vaitila in Kochi, probably um, I think if not this time, next time when all of you visit, you should be able to see that metro, rail, road, water transport, everything comes at one place. So that is a physical integration we are able to make it happen. Similarly, on the back end, the digital integration is also a must. That is where the open mobility networks, so that you follow one protocol, open protocol, so that you can seamlessly integrate various modes of transport. I think both the integrations are. Are actual integration, physical as well as virtual integration in the back end. I think this is what uh, we could do it. In fact, uh, Kerala is a maybe overgrown village or a, a urban continuum. You can say it has a single city which is elongated. So we are planning that trans on the lines of transport for London TFK. You take the entire state as one single city transport for Kerala, so that these uh, mobility hubs comes across. and the digital one single platform for uh, travel across the various modes of transport in the god's own country we call it kerala is a god's own country so it's a we are planning to have one single digital card called god's own travel card which you can download in your mobile now with the mobile to mobile payment gateway you don't need you can your pas passenger information system your uh, gps your ticketing solutions qr code Uh, including driver monitoring can be done over mobile so that is what uh, we are planning um, and basically the mobile so mobile mo- uh, transformation from mobile to mobility so these are the fundamental uh, um, uh, maybe five pillars on which we have built our uh, uh, transport system five zeros zero cash that means go 100% digital zero emission you reduce the emission to almost nil uh, either go for electric or battery electric or the fuel cell electric vehicles then uh, use zero congestion by uh, proper planning and uh, see the planning is the most uh, crucial as uh, mr shashi varma from dfl used to always mention 
productivity of a city depends on how fast you move the men and material. That means uh, you need to plan your cities and integration is more important than uh, coordination because generally we have got a, a lot of coordination or committees. Committees are basically the, the uh, at the end of the day, the, you won't get the actual result what is intended. So zero congestion through uh, proper planning, integrating the common, uh, the, the CMB or the uh, mobility plan for the city with the urban plan. So this is uh, the this, uh, this to reduce the congestion. Then zero accident or vision zero uh, through maybe mobile enforcement, etc. It's in zero waste. That means you zero waste, wastage of zero, wastage of time also is included in that, apart from converting the old waste into wealth. So this, I think, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm just uh, one model of the God's on travel card, which can be downloaded in your uh, Actually, we are in touch with the MasterCard for the mobile-to-mobile -mobile payment, payment gateway as well as the digital card, which you can download. So uh, then we already set up electric, uh, what is it, e-codes. We did the trial and we have got a command control center, which was set up as part of the Kochi and the uh, Toronto Smart City is being used for monitoring the vehicle, vehicle movement. Then uh, we have brought the open mobility network. I will just show one slide which is developed by Beckham, which is Nantar Nelakeni Foundation, which will allow seamless integration between various modes of transport. So then uh, uh, that, that, is, that is one, the, you know, probably that is first of its kind, in the, probably in the country and the world, where you, you may have different apps, but instead of a person using different apps, you can have, why do you need, uh, your mobile will be full of apps only. So you don't need one card. Actually, you can maybe at a later stage, you, your face itself becomes your, uh, uh, card and your uh, everything. So uh, now the mobile will be the so mobile will can carry the digital what your driving license, RC book. Now already the digital platform is allowed. Travel card, debit card, ATM card, shopping, everything can come in the, your one single digital card which can be downloaded. Then this is the open mobility network which we have launched in Kochi. And now we started with a thousand uh, drivers. So that means taxi drivers. We have given them the training. Next is 25,000 auto rickshaws and 1,000 buses, private buses, apart from our water transport, the water metro, metro as well as the uh, KSRT's buses, which will use one single protocol, open protocol, so that in seamless integration between various modes can it's, uh, it is possible. Then uh, zero emission, actually, you might be knowing that we are the first ones to launch the solar boat uh in the country and now we in fact today only we sanctioned 10 hydrogen fuel cell buses for a feeder for the kochi metro in fact uh, uh, the kochi in international airport is a world-class model in the entire world we are first airport to be uh, run 100 uh, percent on solar now they are going for green hydrogen generation uh then we have banned the uh what is it, diesel autos and so that they also convert either to cng lng or electric uh, then uh, government uh, now procures only electric vehicles for its use and building routes have been amended. Then charging centers and swapping centers have been set up across the uh, state already. And we are planning to have 1 million vehicles by 2025. Already, uh, let me tell you that uh, as on uh, yesterday, uh, more than uh, uh, 10,500 vehicles have been registered, electric vehicles have been registered across the state. Then uh, zero emission. The NMT is non-motorized transport and cycling. We have been actively promoting both the Kochi, the municipal corporation, KMRL, as well as Smart City, uh, along with other organizations. We have been promoting uh, cycling as well as uh, non-motorized other modes of uh, transport. Then the congestion I already covered, you know, transport for Kerala, and we have got an MTA in place, which is uh, which does the planning. Parking policy has been uh, developed for the is being developed for the uh, entire city and a smart tab uh, so that the uh, you you are guided into your parking lot and the integration with uh, uh, the CMB with the urban planning then uh, we are planning a semi high speed across the state so that you know and you integrate other modes of transport through uh, hydrogen ports or the bus systems or the what is a LRT or uh, what is ideal for each city uh, then we have got a VCF uh, framework in place that's in the final stage of approval. So that, uh, and uh, transit-oriented development is in there in the, all the new projects which are coming up. Uh, we are exploring the potential for a green bonds. 
uh, so that uh, such a major infra, infra which needs which has got a maybe irr might be in the 8 to 9 range so we need a long term funding so the, we have got an alternate probably kerala is uh, the second state in the entire country to set up an alternate investment fund kerala infra fund so i think tamil nadu is another state which has done it then this is the mobility hub which i was mentioning that you know where the metro road rail water water metro everything merges at one place uh, then uh, maybe accident reduction is another key key area which we are looking at we could achieve 39% our target is for minimum 50% by this year end we use artificial intelligence ai cameras dashboard cameras etc for that and including the citizens uh, through third eye so then waste to energy i, I think covered basically you are we are switching over from carbon to hydrogen economy so that the fossil fuel will be replaced with uh, what is a cleaner either solar wind or biomass based hydrogen uh, and hydrogen ports are also with dpr for uh, hydrogen ports in kochi uh, city is being made by sistra uh, then i think this in uh, we already we I, i just covered the first point that kerala model of uber or we call it uber demand driven model uh, where the auto rickshaws unorganized uh, operators whether it is taxi or or uh, or the auto rickshaws or the private buses we need to aggregate them so that they make them into one single company so that it's easy easy for them to adopt the technology and you are uh, what to say you are uh, uh, then the economies of scale can be reached training can be imparted they will also benefit uh, from that they get more uh, ridership the metro also gets more uh, what is a feeder uh, uh, ridership also increases at the same time both all are uh, benefited by that more people will switch over to the public transport we because we found that you know 85% of the people used to use public transport earlier now it has come down to almost 20 to 24% so the, the challenge is to increase the public transport then i think bus port logistics port and we have got an spv for the promoting public transport then uh, the concept uh, maybe of the this uh, uma is uh, the mobility for all how do we include everyone so that all are benefited whether it is uh, walking or the nmt or the cyclists or the in fact the honorable ministers allowed that cycle may be carried free already we are doing in metro now in the buses also we allowed motorcycle and cycle to be carried and in fact in our semi high speed what we are planning the trucks or the your car itself can go inside the train so that is the way it is designed so intermodal integration both in physical as well as uh, what is a uh, digital world is uh, taken care of this in natural is what uh, what we Uh, we could do or, or what we are planning so thanks a lot for uh, giving me an opportunity to share some of our thoughts with you thank you uh, thank you mr uh, shrutilal it was a very interesting presentation uh, you did mention something about mobilizing all the transport providers and bringing them under one platform as a single spv that include to include uh, auto drivers and to include uh, buses in fact in kerala bus owners ship is so widely distributed that there are there are operators with one bus 10 bus or probably even a bus owned by two operators so what are the challenges which you could uh, how do you overcome this challenge that's very that would be very interesting to know yeah actually community is community community develops when unity is there so when uh, they know that when when see when a system changes under three certain when you are thoroughly hurt thoroughly bored or a transition event happens covid is a real bra- i i i uh, that's a very disruption very good re- disruption so people came together naturally when you are you are having problems you know, then they, they we could bring all the unions let me i should thank all the unions because we highly unionized sectors and all the whether it auto rickshaw bus uh, uh, or the taxi operators we could we had a, almost a discussion for almost one and a half to two years we kept on uh, what is a Uh, having discussion with them then they when they understood that it is more beneficial for them to come together so that uh, even if physically they are not able to what is a come together digitally they can be brought on one platform so we tried both physical as well as so initially we made them into society then we made them into one single company now they are in a position to what is a become the biggest aggregator in fact uh, private buses are almost three times that of the our uh, stu 
so we could bring all of them together 25000 auto rickshaws and uh, around 1000 buses in kochi and uh, uh, 1000 taxis so we we had a excellent cooperation from all of them i should thank all of them for that yeah thank you sir and thank you for finishing in time i think that reminds me that i could uh, uh, tell the housekeeping rules to the other speakers that in if you are uh, allotted 15 minutes of time and uh, probably around the 12th minute into your presentation if i happen to interrupt please pardon me i don't intend to be rude but it's just to be fair to all the other speakers so uh, with that i would uh, take the opportunity to invite dr rajesh pandya who is the managing director of the surat municipal corporation and smart cities limited to kindly advise the audience on the efforts taken and the achievements of this multimodal integration in surat dr pandya uh, thank you sir i hope i am audible sir yes sir loud and clear yes uh, first of all a very good evening to all the chairman sir and all the eminent panelists i am sincerely thankful to ministry of housing and urban affairs and iut for giving me the honor of being a part of this galaxy of experts as you have said sir and putting before the work done by surat municipal corporation in the field of public transportation and especially in integration of the public transportation in uh, uh, especially in the bus, uh, bus bus operation sir sir uh, let me begin by saying that surat like any other cities had its own challenges especially the mobility challenges like rapid growth which came which came the high city mobility inadequacy of road networks increased congestion and in travels and rapid growth in vehicle ownership and travel so this had to be met with some integrated transport mode and as uh, jyotilal sir had mentioned integration does not mean only physical integration sir i will go ahead with integration that is not only physical integration it is integration of fare we have to do infrastructure integration its integration and institutional integration in a, in some of the cities uh, we have observed that one company is operating brts another company is operating city blink some companies are operating so what we did we did an institutional integration only one company operates all the buses brts city bus high high speed transport and all those things so this is how we moved ahead all the city buses brts and hmcr operated by single company there is a physical integration the brts station also acts as a bus stop for the city buses also and it can be used as a interchange also the fare integration as you were telling sir one journey one ticket even if you change from brts to city bus or city bus to city bus you don't have to buy another ticket so the the passenger gets the benefit of the telescopic fare and he is but uh, he is not having the problem of buying ticket again and again then there is infrastructure uh, integration we can share the, uh, the we can share the all the infrastructure that like the bus stops depots terminals are shared so the overhead costs comes down and the its and institutional integration if different companies or different departments operate then there is always a problem of integration between them the policy matter so our whole transport system is operated by the single institute that is the surat uh, city link company and in this sir what we are doing uh, we are doing the real time monitoring the integration has given us the add on of intelligent transit management system which gives us the real time monitoring and system based operations we have got automatic fare collection systems which gives a revenue collection mechanism and we have got the integrated traffic control system which gives us the road traffic management so by operating a single bus service we have tried to come ahead, come away do away with a lot of other problems like traffic problems and revenue connection of problems also so these are some of the components which have helped us to integrate our system into one system so i'd like to show some of the uh, cost components this is the its component uh, the, uh, the itms the integrated transit management system where we have the off board or on bus pis system 
the bus driver console where the driver is in live real time connection uh, uh, con uh, chatting with the uh, our uh, control system there is in bus pis displays and real time tracking of all our buses so all the buses are at real time and this is the automatic fare collection system there are turnstiles fare gate validators point of sales and this helps us to have a real time uh, vision or idea of how many people are in traveling the bus at as, as of now and which direction which buses are full and which direction the buses is not operating and sir we have also a surat money card as you were telling a smart card which can be used for all travels and not only for traveling it can be used for all the purpose even even in for uh, paying their taxes paying your charges and they are operatable in the shopping centers also so this is how we are trying to have go towards a cashless transaction and integrated collection of the fares also sir this is the its component that is itcs integrated traffic control system this is there are ptz cameras in, installed throughout the city which act as surveillance cameras also and point out, point out how the traffic is moving we have variable messages signing signage system which can direct the trans, tra transport or traffic from the uh, congested areas to the other areas we have uh, centralized junction monitoring which can and the junctions can be controlled from our command and control center sir by this application of its as you are very correctly telling sir the its is a very important the digitization is very important so in the various component we do the bus station analysis for the peak and off peak hours loads with od analysis route wise bus wise conductor wise analysis and different driver analysis so these different analysis help us to integrate the whole system wherever we find that there is system is lacking or it needs improvement the real time follow up or correction can be done and by doing all these integrations we what is the outcome who is the who are the beneficiaries the beneficiaries are citizens because they have got mobile ticketing which helps them with uh, ticketing there is increased reliability and user satisfaction boarding and alighting with one tap using the money card reduction in travel time and single journey with an integrated fare this has also helped us to improve the operations because a real time data helps us to improve the real time operations sir we have got a dynamic scheduling system also so whenever we feel we observe that there is a sudden increase in the passenger load we can increase the uh, number of buses deployed we can increase the reduce the frequency and we can adjust our bus services operations real time on this spot the stakeholders which with based on the data driven decisions making are also benefited and the society as a whole is benefited by the increase in the operations and shift of the from the private vehicles to okay so this is the financing mechanism sir so in any transport service or public service financing is also very important how we finance because ultimately at the end of the day it is the finance which reflects your efficiency so we have got a very innovative urban transport fund that has been dedicated fund that has been created by the municipal corporation it is add on by this the fare box revenue and another add on is the the is the uh, viability gap funding that is given by the, the government of gujarat to for operating the buses and we operate the buses on the gcc model so what are the salient features of a system is that we have created a specific purpose vehicle for operating this and we are using the real time google map google map which gives us transit fleet specifications we have the integrated public transport system and it is the longest dedicated brts network in the country and we are improving upon it it was 108 now it is 110 kilometers we have the, the transit system priority vehicle planning and dynamic scheduling system and during the covid we operated the buses to help in the covid situations also and what is the unique about this is that we have a very efficient system of public participation we have meetings with public users and stakeholders consultation meeting we do satisfaction surveys and there are online complaints toll free numbers so our feedback from the customers is our line how we can go ahead so let me tell you uh, another thing is the how now what is our 
approach to multimodal integration sir now surat is coming up with the metro so our target is right from the planning stage we are integrating with the metro so metro and buses will be fully integrated and we are going ahead with this and this is the journey of surat public transport sir before 2007 there were no buses from 2007 we started the city bus operations and there, there was some improvement in 2014 we started the brts and 2016 we started the full operation of city buses and 2018 we started the hmc and in 2021 this year we have started the operation of electric buses so the satisfaction of people is our more target and we are working towards a sustainable future and the way ahead for us is electrification of public transport all the rolling stock of depots integration with surat metro promoting digitization by ticketless traveling increasing first and last mile connectivity by ipt and cycling as you have said sir and also route strengthening and operations sir our motto our vision is saral safe accessible reliable advanced and low carbon this is what we interpret by saral we are saying a simple simple transportation system that is safe accessible reliable advanced and low carbon for our people because our thought is saral parivahan leads to samruddh janjeevan if you want to have affluent life good quality of life a simple simple but integrated public transport system is very important thank you sir thank you dr pandya it was a very interesting uh, presentation with particularly two points which you mentioned one was the integration of the infrastructure where you mentioned that the same routes would be shared by all the modes on the surface and in fact even that the you are planning that the depots could be shared by different operators uh, there is time you could uh, probably mention how do you overcome challenges in sharing the depots the other uh, interesting point which uh, we could see from your presentation was your planning right now to integrate with the future metro which is likely to come in uh, in surat so while we just take the opening uh, remarks of uh, my when we integrate do we have any uh, at least a physical access of it and the digital uh, integration do we keep in mind any norm that uh, a person should be in a position to move from one mode to the other or from the premises of the transport company to the outside world say within a time of 3 minutes or is that uh, we facilitate that if it is going to be more than 3 minutes how do we ease it out so any thoughts on that dr dr sir 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 uh, uh, first i like to answer about the metro sir Uh, as in metro sir uh, because it we have in, uh, we have started our thoughts initial at the initial planning stage itself sir so what we are doing whenever there is a meeting of metro they cannot even when they are planning their depot there is a member from our team so there is a team that is dedicated for multimodal integration itself and i am a part of that and because we are at a planning stage what we have done if our brt stations are somewhat away then we are ready to shift them closer to the metro stations and our planning is most of the metro stations are elevated so we have asked requested why cannot be a brt station below or nearby when a person leaves the concourse of the metro he gets access directly to the brt station if he has to wants to interchange inter interchange from uh, metro to brts he comes directly to a metro brt station and that is a closed system both system are closed so he does not have to move outside the system from inside the closed system of metro he comes inside the closed system of brts so there is a no one going outside like in the trains we have from one platform to another platform so it will be from the platform of metro to the platform of brts that is our target and we are trying to achieve it wherever it is possible that is one another thing is there will be a fare integration there will be the same card the same card for metro same card for Uh, BRTS a person does not have, and we will integrate in the business rules of both the companies so that there is the person is not worried about what is there, and he gets the benefit of the telescopic fare also. Thank you. Uh, about the sharing of depot, could you throw light? There's uh, time of one minute with you, sir. Sir, uh, we have built the depots, but the civil work and the 
property is ours we are doing the civil work and giving to the depots to the operators so they don't have the ownership or more rights or more expenses on their capital so we ask them whenever there is a if the if one operator has got only only 50 buses and other has 50 buses so they can share it and the same depot can be shared by brts or in the city buses also that we are managing sir thank you dr panel is a really very very interesting uh, uh, concept from surat sir uh, with that and thank you for being so much uh, on time so may i now request the third speaker of the event and invite Mr. Prajesh Dixit, MD of Mahametro, to kindly give his perception on the multimodal integration and the initiatives taken in his organisation, particularly Nagpur. Mr. Good evening, Dixit, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening to all my co-panelists. I'll be sharing the my our experience of uh, Nagpur Metro, where we have done multimodal integration. Uh, I'll tell you how I divided. Please upload. The... Next, next. Uh, I have divided my presentation into. Uh, this, I'll do the introduction of metro and the designing of MMI, and then concentrate on infra structure we have created at the metro stations and the services. we are providing with integration and then uh, also on nmt and uh, ev charging and finally the green journey app we are developing so starting with nagpur metro introduction the uh, nagpur metro consists of uh, 38 kilometers of network out of which we are already operating 26 kilometers and the remaining 12 kilometers uh, also will start from january Uh, as far as the MI, uh, MMI is concerned, we started uh, designing the MMI right from the inception of the project, and uh, these are the elements uh, uh, which we have included in our planning. Obviously, giving the highest uh, priority to the uh, Vyangjan, then pedestrians, then NMT, followed by other modes of transport, and we gave particular attention to EV charging facilities and the parkings uh, at all the stations. this is the uh, a, uh, a typical station where uh, we have provided the infrastructure the idea was that we provide the infrastructure at the station so that because the land belongs to us uh, we have to provide the infrastructure and then we are going in for the mous either with the municipal corporation or with the private operators to run the services on this infra so i need not go into the greater details of uh, how we have Uh, designed this infra in various places uh, at the station suffice to say that uh, we have given highest priority to the devyangjan and the pedestrians uh, this is how it looks from the top uh, particularly i'll draw the attention to the railway station uh, wherever we have uh, railway stations or uh, intercity bus terminus or airport we have uh, taken action to integrate them with the metro with the uh, seamless movement to and fro uh, so that people don't have uh, hassles of uh, going uh, from one mode to the other this is a closer look of uh, the facility that our khapri station uh, which happened to be our first station in nagpur so this, this is the uh, plan of another uh, station uh, named new airport uh, we are where we have integrated this metro station to the highway because the highway is very close to it and the airport uh, as as the name suggests new airport is uh, yet to be uh, yet to come up uh, it is in the planning and design stage next this is a closer look uh, we have to provide a underpass to connect the station uh, to the highway uh, as i said uh, the services on the infrastructure we have created we are obtaining through the mous uh, we have mou with the municipal corporation we have mous with the the number of uh, private operators and uh, mm, uh, uh, we have we have also planned a, a, a special feeder service with the seven seater vans operating within 4 to 6 km of the station area 
and uh, a total length of the feeder uh, routes is about 200 kilometers uh, divided into 38 routes uh, uh, right now uh, we have implemented this with uh, 58 e rickshaws and 731 auto rickshaws of the city uh, with whom we are partnering actually the first and last mile connectivity they were all doubtful when the metro came they all thought that they will lose their livelihood we took them on board and uh, uh, convinced them that this will rather increase their livelihood because people will be ultimately leaving their uh, uh, own personal vehicles uh, uh, and come on the metro and from the stations they will use the autos. Similarly, with municipal corporation, we are uh, planning the re rationalization of their existing routes in the sense that they should not compete with metro they, they should rather run perpendicular to the metro and the rationalization has been done in nine routes out of 42 in addition uh, we have uh, uh, made seven new routes and also the uh, city bus uh, stops have been provided at all the 24 uh, operational stations which were not there earlier we have given special attention to the non-motorized uh, transport and made a 20-year plan along with the municipal corporation, wherein uh, NMT network will be of 740 kilometers. And out of this, we have already done in 23 kilometers. And here our partners will be municipal corporation, PWD, NHI, whoever uh, is operating the roads within the city of Nagpur. Uh, we are uh, also providing a public bike sharing uh, system. Uh, total length is 209 kilometers out of which uh, in 92 kilometers, we have already provided the service. Uh, this is uh, that special feeder service of the seven-seater vans, where uh, 38 routes are there, uh, divided into two corridors. And then we are operating uh, within four to six kilometers of the station area. Uh, as I said, uh, we have 17 MOUs with different uh, operators. Uh, and they have provided uh, some 460 bicycles already and uh, 100 uh, e-cycle, uh, 33 e-scooters, uh, e-rickshaws, uh, feeder buses. And all of them uh, have been integrated through a, a mobile app uh, from where you can choose the route, you can book the ticket, uh, a common ticket, uh, including other modes of transport and uh, save uh, money as well as the pollution because that app also indicates uh, the carbon emission generated in the different routes. Next. Uh, these are the photographs of the uh, services being provided by these operators uh, which have been integrated through the app. Uh, as I said, uh, some routes already have been uh, uh, rationalized uh, because they should not be running parallel to metro routes and uh, some new routes also have been introduced and uh, we are taking action for the remaining routes to be rationalized. Uh, this shows as to uh, in the rationalized routes, we show the timings uh, of metro at the bus stop and uh, timings of the bus at the metro station and also do the announcements, etc. Uh, and pro uh, and the, uh, uh, the buses and the uh, other uh, um, uh, modes of transport have started already operating at the stations which we are operating for last about uh, two years. Of course, there was some interruption due to Corona. So we are picking the thread again. Uh, these are the, uh, actually, this is the network of uh, non-motorized transport, which is to be implemented uh, over 20 years by us and also by uh, the other uh, infrastructure providers in the city. And uh, they are mainly NMC, PWD, NHEI, uh, who, will, who will do this uh, over this period of time. Uh, this is a model NMT facility at uh, one of our uh, stations. Uh, again, uh, uh, highest priority is to the pedestrians and uh, to the parking. And also, uh, we have ensured that uh, we provide the e-charging facility at all the stations so that uh, while the public transport like e-rickshaws and uh, uh, e-vans, uh, uh, they remain under charging, they are available to the passengers who are coming by the metro trains. 
there is a model actually an empty facility at uh, one of the stations uh, um, uh, showing the uh, e scooters and uh, bike sharing and uh, uh, cycle track etc uh, as i said uh, a special attention has been given right from the beginning to provide e charging stations we have an mou with the eesl uh, which is a uh, central government uh, public sector company to provide uh, ev infrastructure at all the stations and uh, we have already provided that in about uh, 19 stations out of 30 this is the uh, that green journey app we call uh, which uh, integrates all the modes of transport and here the person gets the uh, the choice of the routes and he also comes to know of what is the level of carbon emission in different routes he can choose the greenest route he can book the tickets a combined ticket uh, uh, through different modes and, uh, and thereby uh, he gets uh, seamless connectivity uh, by different modes including metro Uh, uh he is able to book the ticket so uh, and we have got uh, already uh, the travel card so uh, he gets to pay uh, by the travel card for the whole uh, journey he makes uh, along with metro uh, thank you very much sir Thank you, Mr. Dixit. It was a, a very interesting and a rich uh, paper presented on uh, what has been physically achieved actually inside. Uh, there is uh, about two or three minutes time. Thank you for closing in time. But I would like to take that opportunity to get a few clarifications. I haven't got any questions from the audience so far, but I have got something which I would like to ask you. And towards the end of this. if any of the other panelists can uh, answer that questions or those concerns they would be of common interest but you mentioned about the green charging app and that a person has got a choice to choose the greenest mode uh, does the mmi facility provide any incentive or a discount for choosing the greenest mode out of the available modes this was one the second uh, was that there was a talk of uh, there was a concept discussed of integrating with the highway and the airport so when the airport passengers are linked with the metro or the bus or to the highway uh, they would be carrying a lot of baggage with them also and there would be people with different age groups people with children people with old people how much is the time that is uh, envisaged that an interchange would take place from the exit of one terminal to the entry to the other and uh, how to facilitate these transfers on these two points any thoughts mr dikshit uh, the uh, for this uh, i'll take up this question first uh, for the transfer from metro to the airport and back we have provided the bus with a special design actually uh, as as they are the, at the airport uh, so more luggage space is uh, available for the people to keep uh, the luggage and the timings are flexible allowing people to adjust and the second question was uh, the concession you asked uh, any whether, incentive uh, yeah. any any concession for the uh, green uh, yeah. option uh, chosen by right now there is no uh, uh, discount because uh, our fares are fixed and uh, also the the uh, the autos or the e rickshaws uh, and they also have the their uh, meter fixed so the booking is as per the meters but of course uh, this this is on the cards and in future uh, uh, we can consider uh, provided uh, uh, there is a uh, requirement of it uh, for increasing the utilization by the public in general thank you sir dikshit thank you sir okay, with that uh, we would like to invite the fourth speaker of the day Professor Swami, and uh, to be very frank, Professor Swami, the other people have been very kind to have concluded in time. Let me leave you with a little longer scope. 
So we would expect the presentation to be in full, uh, in a little more detail, with no binding on that, but uh, we will still adhere uh, to 15 minutes of time. So I'll hand over the mic and the screen to Professor Swami. Professor Swami, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so there was some problem with my internet and therefore uh, the delay. Uh, thank you and uh, uh, like to thank uh, uh, the ministry, IUT and all the panelists. Okay, and I have, we have learned a great deal uh, during the past few years uh, our, for our, our association as part of this program. I'd like to talk about uh, the mobility uh, is my presentation visible, sir? Hello? Not yet, sir. It will take some. Not yet. Now, sir? It is coming, sir. Slowly. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. We are able to see it. Uh, it's on the edit mode. If you can make it on the slide share, it will be more... Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir uh, it is still on the edit mode, sir. I have done that, sir. On my laptop, it is on the presentation mode. Okay, if the others are able to see it on their full screen mode, uh, we can proceed, sir. Uh, yes, sir, it is okay. Second, sir. sir, would that presentation be shared from there? Hello. Is it on full screen? Yeah. Yeah, now it is on full screen. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Please, please proceed, sir. Yes, sir. Proceed. Uh, at our location, there is a problem with the internet. I think that's why he's facing a problem. Uh, Mr. Shirani, if you have the backup. No, no, I think we have a presentation. We can uh, I mean, run it. But I think there is a network problem that is Mr. Swami is not on the line. Yeah. Hi, Swami. Are you on the line? No, he's not, sir. Or should we render this show? I mean, this is a slide show. He's huh? Hello. Professor Swami is on mute. Huh? Please unmute. Uh, unmute. Professor Swami, you can mute. We will run the show for you. That will be good, sir, if you can. Please. No, no. Sorry, my internet today, the hotel is... No problem. We will, we, will show, we will show the slides. So, Professor Swami, you may kindly uh, be on the mic and uh, let the IT run, run your presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I think the need for integration and the methods of integration have already uh, been very well explained uh, by uh, three presenters uh, from Kerala, uh, Surat, and also from Maharashtra. The cities, the way they are uh, trying to integrate public transport uh, systems with other modes. Uh, what I uh, would like to talk about today is a method which we have we are trying to develop. Uh, yes, good slide share mode may you know, edit, edit mode may we're trying to we have we have evolved uh, which will attempt to measure uh, the situation in terms of how far have you moved towards integration. 
and this is the evaluation of public transport integration in Indian cities. That is the work uh, which uh, I am trying to present. Will you please come on the full mode slide. Hello, can you go to the second slide, please? I think there is uh, some problem which we are not able to fix. Chodani, sir? Sir. 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 Can you make it on the full screen mode? Yeah, we are trying, we are trying, sir. Uh, All right, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Okay. Go to the next slide, sir. Uh, the method, what uh, has been called, and we call it a four MMI tool. Oh God. We call it a four MMI tool, and the tool uh, con consists of uh, uh, basically uh. what have you been able to put that across, sir? Tani, sir? Uh, sir. Is there a problem? Should I just continue and summarize? Ah. Okay, I think uh, it's uh, you leave it at there. Uh, yes, try. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Go to the next slide. I think you want the time. I'd like to go to the next slide. I think there is some problem. I don't know where. Uh, this slide? Yes, uh, there is a four boxes. There's a slide four. Which slide do you want to play? No, next four. slide, please. Yeah, four is what on, on the screen. Next slide. Next slide. Sure, sir. Now it's the fifth. Is it okay, sir? No, you have not moved this next slide. Uh, full screen. You go to slide five, please. Uh, I am on slide five, sir. It's not visible. Uh, yeah, we are still seeing three. Yes. I think there's a net problem there, sir. Uh, you also need to... And, uh, sir, this is basically a tool which we have developed uh, to measure uh, how our cities are working towards integration of multiple modes. What measures are cities taking today? Are these adequate? Are these uh, efforts standalone or they're interlinked with other measures? And what more needs to be done towards multimodal integration? That's the kind of a measurement uh, is what uh, the effort is being done right now as part of this tool. Uh, this tool is available online. I will give you the address once the presentation is over. Uh, the tool has five different dimensions of uh, uh, multimodal integration. The first dimension is network and service integration. Dimension two is physical integration. Dimension three is fair integration. Dimension four is information integration. And the last dimension is the institutional integration. Each of these dimensions, uh, there are various 
elements. Uh, for instance, in the case of network and service integration, root structure, service headways, coverage, demand versus supply, patterns, and service coordination. In physical integration, proximity of stops, accessibility within the interchange zone, access to the interchange zone, universal accessibility, and the fair integration includes fair policy, fair technology, uh, interoperability, ticketing, information integration in terms of information availability, customer care, data for operational facilitation, and the final one, institutional integration, uh, relates to responsible agency for MMI, decision-making process, leadership and strategy and organizational capabilities, and financing and funding for MMI. Given these five dimensions and the elements therein, an attempt through this particular uh, effort, the MMI tool, it captures uh, where each of these uh, a city, a particular city, where it falls against each of these five dimensions and each of these elements, which are 13 in number. And based on that uh, dimension, uh, one, you try and classify where it is in terms of five levels. The level one, which is the starting level where services are operated more as independent systems and the level five is integrated systems. A graded system in some level one, two, three, four, and five has been uh, attempted by classifying the status of uh, the public transport systems in that city uh, with regard to these five dimensions and the elements therein. Given those five uh, dimensions and the 13 elements, based on that, uh, there is a spreadsheet model, uh, which that is uh, uh, slide 14, if possible, please take there. Uh, given the dimension, you are able to assess where the city is now, and then how do you want to move forward with regard to each of these dimensions and the elements therein. And uh, uh, this will also be able to see how you are improving from uh, uh, the level of integration in terms of the maturity levels. And that is something which can also be uh, presented in the form of a spider diagram. And uh, it is possible uh, in terms of where you are today, where you wish to go in the next two years, three years, which of these dimensions you would like to start with and how you move forward. How do you try and achieve uh, a full maturity uh, with regard to these uh, dimensions and the uh, elements therein. That is what this tool talks about. And uh, this is a tool which we developed as part of the uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and uh, 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 the GIZ project of capacity building. The tool is available for cities to uh, attempt. And uh, in fact, I would like to also say uh, that uh, today's discussions, especially the time taken for a passenger to interchange from the bus to metro station or uh, the other way around and within the station, how much time it takes. I think some of these elements uh, from the qualitative assessment, what we have today, we could also uh, uh, improvise on the measurement methods which are therein. Uh, this tool, as I said, is available on uh, SEPT website, CRDF website, and it will also be available in uh, other public forums. We'll be happy to share if there are any questions. Sir, thank you, and apologies for this technical glitch. I do not know uh, what the problem was. Sir, thank you. Sir, thank you very much uh, for having uh, finished in time and uh, keeping the and being fair to all the other speakers. But uh, you still have a minute uh, to spare. And I would like to request you kindly elaborate that this uh, maturity matrix, while we understand it from the perspective of the sure. city which wants to achieve it, attain it, from the perspective of the users, but the amongst the stakeholders will also sure. be the operators and the service providers. To what extent sure. or how to 
motivate them to come in? Would it be by stipulations or prescriptions? Or is it that there is something for them to gain from it that will buy them in? Could you kindly elaborate? Yes, sir. Uh, there are three stakeholders. I think, uh, uh, of course, the passenger, uh, when uh, the multimodal uh, uh, integration takes place, the benefits are very clear in terms of the travel time, in terms of the travel distance, in terms of the travel costs. I think that is what uh, the uh, outcome indicator, which is there as part of the whole uh, process. Uh, the operator uh, would have, with this integration, uh, uh, the frequency, the reliability, and the load factors, uh, which they will be able to achieve in an integrated system uh, rather than uh, uh, independent system. I think that is the advantage which the operators would have, and therefore their operations will uh, become uh, more efficient and their productivity will increase. And the system, the city as a whole, I believe when you build a metro network, we don't build a metro network just for the area which it is covers, we build it for that city. And therefore, if a city has to get benefit from a metro network, then it has to get connected. If not to anything else, the most important thing is the bus, which covers most part of the city. With bus and metro include integrated, they will be able to actually serve the entire city population within five, seven minutes of walking distance. I think that's a benefit, of course, other benefits include uh, uh, climate change, health, uh, uh, air pollution, uh, and the overall uh, transport effort in the city would get optimized if we are able to uh, integrate. I think those are the benefits which are listed as to why cities should include, uh, 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 implement integration and how different stakeholders benefit from this. Sir. Thank you, Professor Swami. Uh, it was indeed a very interesting subject, and uh, the the vagaries of the net in the area probably did not permit all of us to aware of the full benefit. And we are sure that there will be fresh opportunities when we'll be able to discuss with you the same subject. And uh, with that, we are we are now progressing towards the much-awaited uh, last speaker's presentation. I would uh, invite. Mr. Fabrice Moreno, and I would request him to, first of all, an apology that uh, I introduced him to the audience in his absence uh, by the time he had not joined. And uh, I did uh, take the liberty of introducing you as a knight uh, of the French uh, National Order of Merit, and that you are the chairman of the Station Managers Global Group. It is also that equally interesting that out of this uh, galaxy of six on the panel, Three are with Railway Connect. And uh, without waiting uh, much and allowing people to have full benefit of your presentation, I request uh, Fabrius Marino to kindly hold the stage, hold the mic, and take it forward. We have uh, full 15 minutes of time from you. In case I have to intervene and interrupt, kindly pardon my rudeness, but that would be in overall uh, timekeeping and housekeeping. Mr. Fabrius Marino, please. Thank you very much. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, thank you very much for this yes, uh, introduction. Yes, sir. No, loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear. And can you see my, my screen? Because I, I shared it. I just want to, to see. Yes, sir. Uh, it if is you can. Very, very, very clear, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. So first of all, I want to thank you very much for inviting me. I am very honored uh, to attend uh, to this uh, conference. Uh, and uh, I want to say that even if I connect a little bit later, uh, I was very impressed uh, by all the experiences that uh, the other panelists uh, have uh, presented. So thank you again. Uh, and um, so today I want to talk to you about how to shape a railway station into a TOD project, which is a transit-oriented development project. Um, so maybe just to, to come back to, to the definition of, of the concept, uh, it's a concept, uh, and you can see on these schemes, uh, that um, it was defined uh, in the 1993 uh, as a mixed-use community within an average 2,000-foot walking distance of a transit stop 
uh, and a core commercial area. It means that uh, you have maybe to work, it's a 10 minutes uh, uh, walking distance from a station. And, uh, you know, in the TOD, uh, you have, uh, you can find mixed residential, retail, office, open spaces, uh, public use area, and theater, museum, etc., etc. And uh, it's very convenient. And, you know, it emphasizes on communities and, of course, on uh, sustainability. Now, if you want to go uh, through the definition and the criteria of uh, uh, transit or anti development uh, project, uh, well, you have, first of all, to focus on the multifaceted uh, mobility. It meant that, and many speakers uh, have, have stressed this point, so this is a development of non-motorized mobilities. It's very key. Uh, and because around the station, uh, you have to, to implement a walkable and bicycle-friendly environment. Um, then you have to, to implement as well uh, you know, an efficient transit system around the station with a good and smooth connection. Then uh, a TOD has to create a transportation node integrated into a large scale of transportation network. It means that around, you know, this area, uh, as I told you, you must find commercial area, business center, residential housing, community amenities, et cetera, et cetera. And all this, must um, be found uh, through an optimized density. It's very important because, because you have a, a kind of urban density, you can walk uh, within a very uh, short distance. Now I want to highlight uh, the amazing economic potential of a TOD project. First of all, uh, we consider, and there is really only one question, why we can have such a potential economic uh, potential uh, in a TOD project, it's because you have a passenger flow concentration in a restricted area. It's very, very important to, to say that. Then, thanks to that, you can create added, added value, well, for the people who visit the station, the TOD, but as well, you create added value for the neighborhood and beyond the neighborhood for the city uh, around the station. You can create uh, employment in and around the station. And for instance, I will give you only one figure. We have assessed that, for instance, in, in, in San Azar station that you can see on this picture, when you create one job in the station, it will imply the creation of four jobs around the station. And as a matter of fact, you know, station can be considered as a, a hub of green mobility. And because you prefer to use uh, public transportation, uh, electric cars, extra, extra, metro, buses, it will lead to decrease the carbon emission. And it's very, very important. Now I want to, to take uh, the case of Salazar Station. So um, just very briefly, Salazar so is a station, the, one of the largest uh, railway station in Paris, located in Paris, France. And as you can see on the picture on the right, this is the new station which has been refurbished uh, a couple of years ago. So this is a Salazar TOD project. You can see the plaza of Salazar. You can see the outside view of the heritage station. You can see this huge building. And in this building, so first of all, you have a lot of connection to public transportation. As you can see, you have the entrance of the metro on the left. You, are, you can see the buses, you can see the car, you can see the motorcycle, you can see the bicycle, and you can see, you know, around this plaza, uh, the, the, the pedestrian pass for the people who want to enter uh, and to connect, you know, the, the, the station smoothly. You can also uh, see, so this is, well, this is a key issue and the key factor of a TOD project. It means all the different modes of transport and the connection between them. Then you can also have uh, different um, activities. You can see an event center as the first floor of the station. It's an event center. It's very, very important because if you want to, to attend an event, you don't have to take your car. You can attend this event by taking the metro uh, buses. Then you also have a business center and the gym center in the station and very close by the station, 
connected by a concourse, you have a, a Hilton Hotel. You can see it on the right of the picture. And for us, that, that, that is a real uh, example, a good example uh, of a TOD that um, we have implemented uh, in, in Paris and in France. If I come back on this um, case study, well, when we decided to, 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 to create this, well, to turn and to reshape the railway station of San Lazar into a TOD, it was in, in, tw in, 20, uh, in 2009. Well, we did SNCF uh, Group, which is a state, which is a state owned company, and SNCF is um, the French railway company. We did not want to take much risk. So, uh, and we have a huge stake. We want, first of all, to, to, to refurbish this, uh, this uh, huge Parisian station. As you can see, it's, we have an heritage building. Uh, we have a, a very important uh, amount of passenger. We have uh, almost, uh, you know, 132 million passengers per year, which is, uh, which is a lot, uh, even for French station. And we have uh, 65,000 square meters uh, to, 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 to refurbish. And it implies, obviously, a, a, a great investment in, in, in terms of, of money. So the work now. So first of all, we had to, to innovate, uh, to, uh, to revamp you know, the entire passenger hall and to create a new reception hall. Then you have to create a new commercial gallery with escalator, stair to links, you know, the different level, and especially to link the station, the commercial gallery, to the metro, to the buses, uh, and to, uh, for instance, the, the car park. Then we have to reshape as well uh, uh, the ticket office to make it more functional. And we remodel, you know, we reshape as well the, pla the Parvi and the Plaza that, that, you, that you have seen on the first picture. And we created new entries and smooth connection to the city. It's very important to say, to create the smooth connection to the city uh, for the passenger and the visitor who lives uh, uh, around the station and who wants to visit the station. And we consider that the results are, are really outstanding. First of all, uh, we, we did uh, a uh, two, uh, 250 million euro investment, which, which is quite, quite, quite a, a price and a, a big amount. We create uh, 80 new shops and we find a, a retail manager called Clépierre. And what, what, is, what is really interesting, and I want to stress this point, so we have a general turnover per square meter in the new commercial gallery in the TOD of 16,000 euros per year. And what is very interesting and important for us as a station manager is around the, around the station, the general turnover per square meter is less important. It's about 10,000 uh, euros uh, per year. So it means that returns and retailer are ready to pay more to be in the TOD. And you know why? It's because you have a, a better profitability in the TOD than outside and in the rest of the city. And you know why? I will tell you. It's because of the high concentration of passenger flow in the station, in the TOD. That's why. Then, uh, if one of our key uh, factors to, to, to succeed uh, to implement a TOD is uh, definitely the quality of dialogue with all the stakeholders during the renovation operation process. And you know those stakeholders, you know them as well as I, ha I do. It's, um, you know, the local governments, the railway operators, the retail developer, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have to have definitely a credible and solid financial structure. And uh, you have to, to work on the quality of the relationship between the railway operator, the station manager, and the local government. Because of course, if you want to have a smooth connection with the road, with, the, uh, with everything around the station, it's, it's local governments must be involved uh, in, in, that, uh, in that project. So in a nutshell, uh, the key to success, uh, you know, to implement a TOD project, first of all, is to carry out you know, the study uh, at the very first stage. You have to carry out the study very ahead. And it, it means, first of all, commercial potential uh, of the TOD, but also flow studies. Mr. Moreno, uh, please yes. pardon me. You are approaching the 
uh, you have a lot of time. Can you? Yes, I, I am about to, 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 to conclude. I am about to conclude, to conclude. So you have to also to take into account, you know, all the local specifications, the culture, the history of the territory, and definitely to find the best partner. And as a conclusion, I just want to say that so we deliver in France, uh, we accompany more than one TOD, 100 TOD project from the, the biggest ones such as Paris and other station or very small one in the countryside. We are, we are an agile structure with a branch office uh, in India, settled in, in, in New Delhi. We have definitely an uh, international experience and we will be very eager to cooperate with, with you and with all uh, you know, the, the people who are attending the, this panel. So thank you very much. And I'm, I will be eager to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moreno, for an extremely rich and uh, clear presentation on the aspects of DOD in a station of choice. I have, uh, and it was uh, very well in time. So thank you very much again. Amongst all the questions which had come, one question so remains the unanswered, and it is outstanding. I believe to all the panelists, EOD, and especially uh, if Mr. Moreno could answer it. The question have, is uh, that in the Indian time. context, Thank if there are uh, considerations for elevated car parks or uh, for taxi in the last mile elevated are there any thoughts of restricting elevated car parks? I'm sorry, there is an echo. Can you repeat the question? There is an echo. I don't know if it's my my, okay. the, my computer, think, but okay. The uh, the question uh, is that in the Indian context. Would elevated car parks serve the purpose of last mile connectivity? Yes, I, I guess. I, I guess yes. You know, the last mile connectivity is it, it's key. It's key when, when you design a QD project. It's very important uh, to 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 know how to to make these last miles. But in certain cases, you could also make these last miles not with an electric car, but you can also make it with a bicycle or with an electric scooter or with another mode of transportation. So I think that electric cars or car should be one of the modes of transportation, but not the main one. Especially if you are in a TOD uh, uh, project, because I told you in the TOD project, uh, you have all the amenities, all the activities uh, at less than 10, at a 10 minutes walking distance from the, the railway station or the metro station. Uh, uh, Mr. Moreno, you mentioned 10 minutes. Other than the main yes. railway stations, for uh, smaller stations, would you still feel that uh, 10 minutes is good enough or it should be much lower at around three minutes? I don't know. If, uh, it depends if, if you are able to work, to work fast. And, <laughs> but okay. uh, I don't know. I say, I say 10 minutes. No, it could be between three and 10 minutes. I don't know. It's, it's depend on the of so many criteria, for instance, if it's really hot outside, if it's raining, if the sidewalk, are, it depends. Well, I say it's between, between as a matter of fact, it's 500 meters, uh, you know, the, the, the range. But uh, I, uh, it really depends, you know, of the, of the city. And, uh, and so uh, maybe sometimes three minutes, it's, it's, a good, it's a good time, but sometimes you can go up to 10 minutes in certain circumstances. Okay. Thank you, sir. I think uh, I, would like to, I would like to take the opportunity of uh, thanking all the speakers as individuals and as a whole for having uh, cooperated to be on time, a very patient audience. And uh, with that, I would uh, take the mic back to the Institute of Urban Transport for the closure of the project, closure of the event. Mr. Chodani. Thank you, sir. It was a very lively conducted session. We had a good presentation, live case from Surat, from Nagpur and other, even from France. I think this will provide some input for our future programming. Thank you very much, sir. You're conducting the session in a well time because time is very essential for this online conference. Thank you all. Thank you to reporter also. I hope she will send me whatever the report she has. 
by email. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.